Neisseria meningitidis, or meningococcus, is a bacterium that is responsible for fast evolving sepsis and meningitis. Although we have antibiotics that easily kill the bacterium in vitro, rapidly giving them to the patients is sometimes insufficient. And in those cases, unfortunately, the blood pressure starts to drop. This is why we need a better understanding of how these infections work. And that's where medical doctors and biologists need to work together. So the story of the infection actually starts in the throat. A total of 10 to 30 percent of the total human population carry this bacterium in the absence of any symptom. In fact, bacteria firmly attach to the epithelial cells that cover the nasopharynx through their pili. Then, they form tight aggregates on the cellular surface. Problems start when they cross the epithelium and reach the bloodstream because they can stick to the endothelium, start to proliferate, and form clusters that eventually fill capillaries in only a few hours. Neisseria meningitidis is an extracellular bacterium, but it does not only stick to the endothelium. In fact, while it multiplies on the endothelial cell surface, meningococcus induces a remodeling of the host cell plasma membrane. You can see it on this video where we dropped an aggregate of bacteria, in blue, on the cell plasma membrane, in green. As soon as the bacteria reach the cell surface, plasma membrane massively accumulates and forms protrusions in between aggregated bacteria. From a cell biology point of view, this is very interesting because no polymerization of the actin cytoskeleton is required. Actually, this step does not even depend on energy within the host cell so it seems that it is only driven by the bacterium. Our lab has also shown that plasma membrane remodeling allows the bacterial macrocolonies to remain attached to endothelial cells while facing shear stress. And it's easy to understand why the bacterium needs to do that because there's a lot of shear stress that is generated by the blood flow and the circulation. Surprisingly, meningococcus combines efficient aggregate formation to resist bloodstream and a liquid-like behavior. Aggregates in liquid suspension are spherical, very dynamic and can rapidly fuse together, just like oil droplets in water. Their viscosity is similar to honey, as measured in this pipette aspiration experiment, so bacterial aggregates behave as a viscous fluid material. This liquid-like behavior depends again on type 4 pili, which generate intermittent attractive forces between bacteria and lead to high single-cell motility within the aggregate. Interestingly, we found that liquid aggregates proliferating in microchannels can rapidly adapt to a capillary-like geometry. So, we think that being able to form liquid aggregates is important for bacteria to efficiently colonize the capillary network. Eventually, bacterial clusters lead to blood vessel rupture and vascular leakage. And that is what causes the purpuric lesions and the organ failure that we observe in the patients. We progressively have a better understanding of the disease. And this opens new avenues of research in particular for our ability to kill or remove bacteria inside the blood vessels. And we need to work together and collaborate with pharmaceutical companies to make this happen.